So we just worked with gastroic geometry at STP, but now we're not at STP. When we were at STP, it was easy. We knew that one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters of any gas. That made it easy. And that got us from volume to moles, no problem. But when you're not at STP, we have to use our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And within that ideal gas law, there are our volume and our moles. So it requires a little extra work. So we start out, the first question reads, what volume of chlorine gas is required to react completely with 2.51 grams of silver metal at 24 degrees Celsius and 750 torr? So I realized I want to know what volume of gas, but to get there, I know something about my silver. So I realized, first of all, I need a balanced chemical equation. So in my balanced chemical equation, I know that two moles of silver plus one mole of chlorine will yield two moles of silver chloride. What type of chemical reaction? Correct. This is a synthesis reaction. Two individual elements come together and form a compound. I, I know I have um, 2.51 grams of my silver, and I know I'm going to take what I know about silver and determine an unknown about my chlorine. So that's what I actually know in this problem. This whole situation, the whole chemical reaction is at 24 degrees Celsius, and the whole chemical reaction is at 750 torr, so that's going to help me out in the process. But let's go ahead then and kind of go back to the roadmap and figure out where we're actually going. So on our roadmap, we go back again, visualize our roadmap. So we realize this roadmap that where we're going, we're actually starting up here. And so what we know is we have our 2.51 grams of my silver. This is where I'm starting, right here. But I want to go down here, I want to know my volume of my chlorine gas needed to react with my silver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from, get again, do a little stoichiometry, go from mass of silver to moles of silver using molar mass of silver. We go to moles of silver to moles of chlorine set up a mole to mole ratio. Now I have moles. Now I can plug my moles into my PV equals NRT. I know my pressure. I know my R. I know my temperature. That's going to turn around and allow me to solve for my volume. So that's the overall road where we're going with this. And a lot of times, again, like I said before, it's very, very helpful to have this all mapped out in your, mapped out in your head. So again, this road map needs to become one of those things where you just register with your memory. So I start with the problem and I say, okay, I have 2.51 grams of silver. And this is where I'm going to do my stoichiometry right here. I'm going to get the molar I'm going to get the moles of silver by using molar mass of silver and I get molar mass from the periodic table. Silver weighs in at 107.87 grams per every one mole. And then I'm going to go from moles of silver to moles of chlorine by setting up a mole to mole ratio. And I see in my balanced chemical equation that I have two moles of silver for every one mole of my chlorine. And now I'm going to solve out the problem in moles. I'm not worried about sig figs. Sig figs are my, for my original values. So now I know the moles of my chlorine. I plug that in. And now I know also the temperature. Now we're right back to using what we did with PV equals NRT, correct? It looked, now it looks like a PV equals NRT problem. But we had to do a little stoichiometry to acquire the moles. So temperature, again, weighs in, it has 24 degrees Celsius. Need to turn that, convert that to Kelvin. We have one digit to the rabbit decimal, so it's a 0.2. And my 750 tor, and I know that 1 ATM equals 760 tor, so I divide by 760, convert that to ATM. I'm solving for volume, and I, ha I know R. So now it's just a PV equals NRT problem. When I isolate my volume, so I divide both sides by pressure, and then plug and play. Just plug in my values. And again, as you can see now, I have taken units off because I know I've done all, I've uh, front loaded this problem, and I know I have all the units set up correctly. They're in the, all the values set up correctly, and they're in the correct unit, so I know that everything's going to properly cancel out. And therefore, I know volume, I will end up in liters according to R, and that's how I have it all set up. So my volume ends up being 0.288 liters of chlorine. The second problem reads, how many grams of mercuric chloride will react with 567 milliliters of ammonia gas at 27 degrees Celsius and 115 kilopascals? So again, what I know in this situation, what I know in this situation, I want to know how many grams of mercuric chloride react with 567 milliliters of ammonia gas. So what I know about my ammonia gas, I know that right now I have um, 560 seven milliliters. And then I know I'm going to go from ammonia gas to my mercuric chloride. That's where I'm actually going here. 
And I know the whole reaction takes place at 27 degrees Celsius, and I know the whole reaction is occurring at 115 kilopascals. So let's go back again to the roadmap. So we go back to the roadmap, and we realize we're starting with our volume of my ammonia, and I want to go to grams mercury chloride. So going back here, now I realize I'm starting down here with my ammonia. So my ammonia right down here, N H three, but the problem it's in milliliters, I will have to convert that to liters. Now, here's the problem. Now, I'm, instead of the problem before, we used PV at the very end, but now we're going to use PV equals NRT at the very beginning to get us from a volume of the ammonia to the actual moles, moles of ammonia. So we have to use PV equals NRT initially. Once it gets us, once we plug in and solve for moles of ammonia, then I can finally get over here, which I'm going to is my um, mercuric chloride. I can actually go from here again to moles of mercuric chloride, molar mass of mercuric chloride to get out the mass of mercuric chloride. So that's where actually where we're going. So now we're going to use PV equals NRT first. Let's go back to our problem. We realize, okay, I start out with 567 milliliters. First of all, I realize to use my when I use PV equals NRT, my volume has to be in liters. So I'm going to just convert it, move the decimal three places to the left. And so I have my volume of my ammonia. Now I know, also in this situation, I also know that the reaction takes place at 27 degrees Celsius. It's a 0 0.01 digit to arrive at decimal, so it's going to convert to Kelvin be a 0 0.2. My, again, my 1 point, 1 1.5 at the very end, 273.15, the five rounds to 1 up to a 2. My 115 kilopascals, where I know that we're 101.3 kilopascals in every 1 ATM, so I divide by 101.3. I get everything in ATM. I know my R, and now I'm going to solve for moles. So we solve for moles, we plug it in, just a simple PV equals NRT problem. Now I want, want to isolate moles, so we divide both sides by RT. Plug and play. And I know units are set up correctly. I front load, I front load the problem once again. So I simply multiply across and divide. So 1.135 times 0.567 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 300.2 equals, and I get my moles. Again, not worried about sig figs. So now then I go back, and now I can actually plug in the moles, and now I can go back to do some stoichiometry. So this time I started out with PV, and PV equals NRT, and now I continue on with stoichiometry. So I continue on, I start with moles. Our first thing I'm going to do is with moles of ammonia, I'm going to set up a mole to mole ratio to get to mercuric chloride. So I realize that for every one mole of ammonia, or two moles of ammonia, excuse me, I have one mole of mercuric chloride. Then we use the molar mass of mercuric chloride to get back out the mass. So I add it up. One mercury, two chlorines, weighs in at 271.49 grams per mole. Grams per moles, when moles cancel out, I end up in grams of mercuric chloride. Sig figs, I go back to my original value, 567, three sig figs, 115 kilopascals, three sig figs. My temperature is four sig figs in Kelvin, therefore we have three sig figs in the final answer. And let me emphasize again, why do we look at Kelvin? Why do we look at Kelvin, not Celsius? Uh, and the reason why is because, remember, we're doing addition subtraction here, which is a different rule. The rest of the math, we're all we're doing here is multiplication and division, which is fine. That's why we could actually just keep, um, look at 115 kilopascals, even though we use ATM. And we could look at milliliters, even though we use liters, um, because making those conversions was also multiplication and division. But addition subtraction is for our temperature. That's why we have to do the addition subtraction before we can recognize it for a sig fig. So that's why, again, we look at Kelvin. Number three, how many liters of oxygen at 100 degrees Celsius at 16.4 PSI are required to burn 684 meters cubed of methane gas? So again, we need a balanced chemical equation. I have how many liters of oxygen required to burn methane gas, so our methane CH4 plus oxygen is a combustion reaction. The only products you have to worry about are CO2 and H2O. So you see a one mole of methane plus two moles of oxygen will produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Now in this situation we realize again a little, we get a little bit of that dimensional analysis involved here because we realize that with my volume is actually in meters cubed. Now, I'm, my, my, what I know here, my temperature and my pressure are remaining the same. So temperature and pressure, my temperature remained at 100, my pressure remained at 16.4 PSI. They never changed. 
I could have said STP, but it doesn't matter. The fact is my temperature pressure never changed. So then I realized, okay, I can go from meters cubed, I have to get back to liters, and then I can set up a liter to liter ratio and go from what I know about my methane and go to my oxygen. So it's one liter of methane for every two liters of oxygen. So let's go back to the roadmap and, this one, and visualize this one. Going back to the roadmap, now our problem is we're going to have to, we're starting way out here with meters cubed. So with meters cubed, we're going to have to go to, we have to make our way to liters. But once we get the liters, then I can take a straight shot across because my temperature and pressure remain the same. And I can go from my methane directly over to my oxygen over here, setting up a liter to liter ratio. We again start out and with this we go from meters, we go from meters to centimeters. So I know that there are, for every one centimeter there's 10 to the negative equals 10 to the negative 2 meters. Uh, in this situation though I need to cube it. So I use my regular convection, convection, con conversion factor, excuse me, but I have to cube the conversion factor. Remember the exponents, when you have it cubed or square, whatever, you just multiply it. So it's actually the same as 10 to the negative 6. That's going to now get me to, um, now I'm going to set up another conversion factor. And I know that instead of going like to centimeters, to milliliters, and, and then milliliters, to liters, 1,000 milliliters, and a liter. Well, since I know that centimeters and milliliters are the same thing, if there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter, there's also 1,000 centimeters cubed in a liter. So in this situation, 1,000 centimeters cubed is equivalent to one liter of methane. So I just kind of shortened up, kind of took out some extra steps there. And now I get the liters of methane, but now I'm able to go back to my, do my stoichiometry. And I know for every in the balanced chemical equation, for every one liter of methane, there's two liters of oxygen in my balanced chemical equation. So it's multiply, cross, and divide, and your answer ends up being 1.37 times 10 to the 6 liters of oxygen. The next problem reads, how many liters of carbon dioxide can form from 100 liters of oxygen and 45 grams of carbon? Now the problem is, I have ox carbon and oxygen. It's a combustion reaction. I don't have a hydrocarbon, so this car my only product I'm going to get is carbon dioxide. So I have my I have my reaction right here, and I see that one mole of carbon plus two moles of oxygen yields one mole of carbon dioxide. But the thing is, I gave you values for both your reactants, so it's kind of like you're situ in a situation you're looking at kind of who's your limiting reagent. Well, we have to run them both through. So I'm going to have to figure out how much carbon dioxide my 100 liters of oxygen produce, and also then find out how much carbon dioxide my 45 grams of carbon will produce and then go from there. So I realize I want to go from liters of carbon dioxide to liters of oxygen. Then I know that my temperature and my pressure are remaining the same. So I realize I can just go directly across. I don't have to do any extra work and so I go down back to my roadmap and realize for my for my oxygen I can literally run from my oxygen over here to my liters of carbon dioxide over here because once again my temperature and pressure are remaining the same. Remember they didn't have to be at SCP, they just have to remain the same. So my first one I just, I just bring in, I have 100 liters of oxygen. I know my balanced chemical equation, I have one liter of oxygen for every one liter of carbon, carbon or carbon dioxide, excuse me. Therefore my liters cancel out and I realize my 100 liters of oxygen will be able to produce 100 liters of carbon dioxide. I'm not done yet. I don't know if that's actually my maximum I can produce or, or what. So I have to run my 45 grams of carbon through. So in this situation, now we're going back to the roadmap. So now I look at my roadmap and I realize that I'm going to go through my carbon up here. We're going to go from mole to mole ratio, get the moles of carbon, and jump over to the moles of carbon dioxide. Then I'm going to plug the moles into my PV equals NRT, which is going to solve for the volume of my carbon dioxide, and I will be able to get down here. So that's what I'm going to do now with my carbon. So now, like we saw with our from our roadmap, we now have 45 grams of carbon. So we're going to start out with some stoichiometry, then we're going to end up with PV equals NRT. So we're going to use our stoichiometry, 45 grams of carbon. We're going to use our stoichiometry to get the moles of carbon dioxide. Then we're going to plug it into PV equals NRT for carbon dioxide. Because we know this whole chemical reaction is occurring at 25 degrees Celsius and 0.455 atm, then we'll be able to use PV equals NRT to acquire the volume of carbon dioxide. So 
molar mass of carbon dioxide, or carbon, excuse me, weighs in at 12.01 per every one mole. Again, now I go from my balanced chemical equation. For every one mole of carbon, I have one mole of carbon dioxide. Just simply divide by 12.01. I get moles of my carbon dioxide. So now it's a PV equals NRT. I have my moles. I have my temperature. Change it to Kelvin to 0.2. I have my ATM. I don't have to change it. It's already an ATM. I know my R. I'm going to solve for volume. My PV equals NRT. Divide both sides by pressure to isolate my volume. And then we actually plug and plug it in and take our moles times our R times our temperature divided by our pressure and there we go. We realize that the 45 grams of carbon will be able to produce 202 liters of carbon dioxide. The fact is you'll never get there because the 100 liters of oxygen is going to run out. So the maximum carbon dioxide you can actually produce will be 100 liters of carbon dioxide.